Who makes the best three row mid-sized crossover SUV? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to Car Help Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. If you're in the market for a larger sized SUV that has three rows with space for up to seven or eight people, there's a lot of great options that you could consider, but some are definitely a lot better than others. So how do you know which one is best? I'm gonna go through the five very best mid-sized three row SUVs that you need to consider in the areas that matter most, such as design, performance, value for money, and reliability. So to find out which one is the very best, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. Let's start with my number five pick, which is the Mazda CX-9. Over the last several years, Mazda has done a great job of building its brand, improving the design of its models with better build quality, performance, and reliability. And the latest CX-9 is a really great example of that. What I really like about it is that it gives you a lot of the benefits of a more expensive luxury SUV, but at a more affordable price point. It has a really nice upscale look to it with a well-finished interior. The materials are surprisingly nice, especially if you go for one of the higher trim levels and the build quality fit and finish is absolutely top notch. It's also a great driving SUV with a car-like feel and sharp handling, which is something that Mazda has always been well known for. If you're looking for a three row SUV that doesn't feel too big and truck like, then the CX-9 will probably feel just right for you. The performance is also strong thanks to a 2.5 turbo four cylinder engine that makes plenty of power and comes matched to a six speed automatic transmission with either front wheel drive or optional all wheel drive. Mazda reliability has also improved substantially over the last several years since they implemented their Sky Active technology and the CX-5 is definitely one of the more reliable SUVs that you can buy. And finally, it's also a great value because the CX-9 is priced more aggressively than a lot of the other three row SUVs that it competes with. And because it's been around since 2016 without any major updates, you can find some pretty good deals out there with some great purchase incentives. It's definitely a solid overall choice, but there are a few things that hold the CX-9 back from the top spot. And one of those things is the interior space. The CX-9 just doesn't have as much interior space as most of its competitors, and the second and third row seats can definitely feel cramped, especially for taller riders. The cargo area is also very small, but obviously you can improve that by keeping the third row seats folded flat when not in use. The CX-9 is also a little bit behind when it comes to the features and technology. It's just missing a few of the latest features that you get with the other SUVs, and some of the technology, like the infotainment system, just feels a little bit dated and clunky, even though it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you're just looking for a really good buy and you don't mind the smaller size and space, then the CX-9 can be a really good buy, especially for those who don't plan to use the third row of seats very often. But if you want something that does maximize interior space, then you're gonna wanna check out SUV number four, the Honda Pilot. When it comes to interior space, the Pilot is the complete opposite of the CX-9, offering an enormous amount of space in all three rows of seats with a good sized cargo area too. A lot of people consider the Pilot to be the minivan of three row SUVs, and I'd say that they're absolutely right. This is definitely one of the more practical, spacious options on the market. The Pilot also offers a few minivan-like features with comfortable seating for up to eight passengers and an intercom system which lets you monitor the kids that are sitting in the third row seats. The interior is a well-designed space with good materials, fit and finish, and most of the controls are pretty straightforward to use. The Pilot also comes standard with a lot of great active safety features as part of Honda Sensing, which is another nice bonus as well. And if you're looking for strong reliability, it's definitely hard to argue with the Pilot, which has built a great reputation over the last few generations. The drivetrain is Honda's 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine, which makes plenty of power and comes matched to a nine speed automatic transmission with either front wheel drive or optional all wheel drive. This is a simple, well-proven long-running drivetrain that can last a long time with good maintenance, which pretty much sums up the pilot experience. If you're just looking for a well-designed, reliable SUV that offers good value, and more importantly, a lot of interior space, it's really hard to go wrong choosing the pilot. It's a really good choice. And although the pricing is a little bit higher than the CX-9, the Pilot does come with strong resale value. And because it's been on the market for some time, you can find some great purchase incentives, which can make it a really good deal. The only things that really hold it back are the fact that the Pilot is feeling a little bit dated from being on the market for some time without any major updates. And it is missing some of the latest features and technology that you get with a few of the other SUVs. 
The touchscreen infotainment system, for example, looks pretty ancient and can be a bit unresponsive, although its saving grace is that it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you want an SUV that just feels more up to date with features that are going to wow you, then you're going to want to check out SUV number three, the Hyundai Palisade. Although it hasn't been on the market for a very long time, the Palisade has definitely earned a spot near the top of the list thanks to its amazing design, luxurious interior, top-notch technology, and great value for money. The Palisade is one of those SUVs that just gives you so much for the money that it really makes you question whether it's worth it to spend any more to get a full luxury brand. If you go for the top trim calligraphy, for example, you get proper luxury car finishes like Napa leather upholstery and a suede headliner. You also get top-notch technology like one of the best infotainment systems on the market with amazing looking graphics and a great user interface. You also get top-notch safety technology like Hyundai's Highway Driving Assist which gives you true semi-autonomous driving capability on the highway and some amazing camera systems like the surround view camera and blind spot camera which is a unique feature that you really don't see in most other SUVs. This is also a really practical SUV with tons of interior space and cargo room and it has a great driving experience with good performance from the 3.8 liter V6 engine that offers plenty of power and a smooth shifting 8 speed automatic transmission. There's just not a lot to complain about with the Palisade, it's just a well designed SUV that has a lot to offer. But much of the same could also be said of SUV number 2 on the list, the Kia Telluride. Now it's no secret that both Hyundai and Kia are jointly owned companies and both the Palisade and Telluride are mechanically identical SUVs, which means that they also share the same benefits. Like the Palisade, the Telluride has a spacious interior with seating for up to 8 passengers and a good sized cargo area making this a really practical SUV. It also offers a similar luxury SUV experience with tons of features and technology and amazing build quality. The interior also has a similar luxurious feel on the top trim levels with amazing finishes and great technology. The list of available features is pretty similar to the Telluride as well, with some of the highlights being the full color head-up display, the great infotainment system and camera systems, lots of active safety technology, and just lots of really nice comforts like front and second row heated and ventilated seats, window sunshades, the list goes on and on. One small detail though that puts the Telluride just ahead of the Palisade for me is the fact that it uses a traditional automatic transmission shift lever as opposed to the push buttons that you get in the Palisade. It's a small detail but one that I think a lot of people will appreciate. The Telluride is just a solid, extremely well designed SUV that's hard to argue with and with Kia's constantly improving reputation for reliability, it should also be one that'll stand the test of time and it also comes with one of the best warranties on the market which is another huge selling point. The only issue with the Telluride really is because it's such a popular SUV, the pricing can be quite high, so you're not going to get that traditional value pricing that Kia has always been known for. Another issue for some might be fuel economy. Although most three-row SUVs are not known for their great fuel efficiency, I did notice that the Telluride does seem to consume a little bit more gas than most. And finally, although Kia's reliability has substantially improved over the last several years, the Telluride is still ultimately a relatively new model and it doesn't have much of a track record. If you're looking for an SUV that addresses all of these concerns, then look no further than my number one pick on this list, the Toyota Highlander. There's just no arguing the fact that if you're looking for a well-built, reliable 3-row SUV, the Highlander is one of the best choices that you can consider. Highlanders have long been known for their durability and longevity and this is an SUV that you can buy and hold on to for upwards of 10 years or longer without having any serious repair issues. Another major bonus with the Highlander is that it is one of the few 3 row SUVs that you can buy that offers a choice between a conventional gas engine or a hybrid electric drivetrain. Although there's nothing wrong with the regular V6 engine, I do think that the hybrid is the one to go for. It's dramatically more fuel efficient than most other three row SUVs, easily able to average around seven to eight liters per 100 kilometers or around 35 miles per gallon. It's also quieter, more environmentally friendly, and there isn't a huge price difference between the regular V6 and the hybrid, so it is pretty much a no brainer for most buyers. Outside of that, the Highlander is a really well designed SUV with a great driving experience, plenty of interior space, and a really nicely designed interior. It might not feel quite as luxurious and polished as the top trims of the Telluride and Palisade, but for all of the other benefits that it offers, I think it's a worthy trade-off. The Highlander is also an amazing value and the pricing of all the trim levels, including the hybrid versions, is no higher than that of the other top SUVs on this list. 
The bottom line is that the Highlander is an absolute no-brainer. If you're looking for a well-designed, reliable, and even economical three-row SUV, you really can't do much better. Let me know what you thought of the SUVs on this list, and if you have any suggestions for any future car videos or car comparisons, just leave a comment below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, check out carhelpcanada.com. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.